Welcome to Film 5D, the show about everything film and video with the A7S III. I'm Aaron Hammack, and today we're going to talk about how to use acoustic panels to turn your home studio sound from this into this. Wow, that already sounds way better. All right, well, welcome back. Uh, this project took me a few weeks, so I had about two to three weeks, three actually three to four weeks between when I first got my initial panels for my walls until I got all my custom panels, like you could see the posters behind me, and then I got all the ceiling panels and the the corner the corner foam and and the custom acoustic drapes and everything. So now I have everything. So this is what my final sound sounds like. I don't have anything on my floors. I have completely hardwood floors. And I'm in my new home studio. This is what I'm building out. I'm gonna be doing a couple episodes on this. The first thing I had to do was just treat it acoustically. You heard what that first clip sounded like. Let's play that back again. The show about everything film and video with the A7S III. And now what this sounds like. And this is a, uh, it's a bedroom. It's a reasonably long bedroom. It's about 18 feet long. Perfect for kind of a home studio where you have a lot of depth. And I can have that wall back there and shoot up against that with a green screen or with the panels like I have up right now. But I also have very low ceilings, eight foot ceilings, which are standard. And that does cause some other acoustic issues with the sound balancing off the ceiling and bouncing off the floors and just back and forth and back and forth thousands of times. So we did have to treat that as well. My goal with this space is to one, edit, mix with my studio monitors here and have a good acoustical experience with that and be able to actually discern and you know hear a mix and be able to pick out certain frequencies. And you can't do that when there's a bunch of echo and reverb going on, a bunch of early reflections. I also wanna shoot more YouTube videos here, like I am shooting right now. Just you know, fire, turn on my camera, fire up my light, and just have a place to record and have it sound good. I also occasionally wanna have uh, clients over and be able to impress them with the look of the studio. I don't want to DIY everything because I want everything to look professional, but also be a place that could cut out some of the outside noise that you get from a neighborhood where cars are driving by, etc. Um, and then I also want to record some voiceovers. So I want all that stuff to sound great. And I'm hoping that with my current setup, I'll be able to do that. Now, this can be an expensive upgrade, anywhere from one to two to three to four to $5,000, depending on how big your room is and what quality of product you're using to treat it acoustically. Now, there are DIY options. There's plenty of those on YouTube. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. You can get uh, pretty much I mean, 10 to 20 panels done for in the range of a couple hundred bucks versus the thousand that I've spent here. Each of my panels that I bought for this project were anywhere from $80 for the ones on the walls, uh, $50 to $60 for the ones on the ceilings, and for the custom ones behind me, which has my top five favorite movies actually, those were $200 a piece, $200 plus a piece. So not cheap. I got those to replace my posters that I had in my, my old office, my old home studio, which were glass and had reflections on them, not to mention the acoustic reflections. So this will get the same aesthetic I want, have my pride and joy of my top five favorite movies, but also have them uh, contribute to the sound, the good quality sound of the room. Personally, I just don't have the time or the, the tools really to do the DIY panels, but if you do and you don't mind that they necessarily don't look as professional or they're maybe a little bit thicker, then you can go with those. But I'm really happy with the ones I got. The ones I got are from audimute.com. For the most part, all the panels I got are two by four, so eight square feet panels, and they're 1.5 inches thick, and they're completely flexible. They're all foam core, so there's no kind of wood edging or anything like that that you get doing a DIY project. I have had experience with some of the cheaper foam that you get on Amazon for, you know, you get 20 of them, 24 of them in a pack and it comes all compressed and it's 50 bucks. You see a lot of people on YouTube getting these and plastering them all over the walls. I actually did this with my studio at my office and just kind of peppered them all over the walls. And that stuff is just so thin that I almost wouldn't recommend doing that at all just because it doesn't look super great. And if you're gonna do a bunch of it, then you should just get these sound panels anyways. They're gonna be a little bit more expensive, but like I said, there are DIY options. Just having a thicker, 
sound absorbing material is just so much better in my experience. And I, I didn't do any tests in this video as so we're going to get into some tests here in a second just to show kind of the steps in the process and what you might need for your situation. But for me, the thin uh, acoustic sound panels that you get on Amazon just don't work. Not worth the time, not worth the holes you're going to put in your wall. So step one, the first thing you should do is sound panels for the walls. Now, if you talk to an acoustic specialist, they'll tell you that about 35% of the walls should be covered with some sort of acoustic treatment, whether they be these two by four panels that I'm using or you know foam panels, whatever you're going to use, blankets, etc. You want something about 35% of the space to be absorbed. So that's typically going to be in the middle of the wall. And then you just divide the square footage of any given wall by three, and that gets you to around 33, 35%. And that's how much square footage of panels you need to be on that specific wall. Now for me, like I said, this is a combo home office slash studio. So I'm recording videos in here, back there in the middle of the room doing voiceovers. I'm mixing here at my desk. So I just kind of did it evenly throughout the walls. Though you can use a mirror to kind of figure out if you're doing this specifically for audio mixing, you can run this along the wall and see where the earlier reflections are of your your monitors on your desk or behind your desk. Typically, the early reflections are gonna be right next to them, above them, and then behind them. So in this case, I have panels on both sides of my monitors. I have acoustic window coverings um, behind and next to the monitors. And then I have two panels above my monitors as well. But in my case, I got about 12 and a half, 13 and a half. I have, do have an extra one of these two by four, eight square foot sound panels that I put all over the wall evenly. And the ones I have have uh, four keyhole plates, so they're really sturdy, they kind of lock in. And I do recommend a laser level and uh, you know, ruler and, and just to get all these all evenly. So for all of these tests, I use the Sennheiser MK8050. This is a pretty popular super cardioid um, condenser microphone. These are typically used on TV production sets, typically used indoors. Um, the reason you'd use a, a microphone like this is unlike the Sennheiser MKH416, which is a very much more directional and sensitive microphone, this one picks up a little bit more of a cardioid, a super cardioid uh, pickup pat pattern. So it could pick up sometimes two people at once. It could pick up someone as they're moving or turning their head a little bit more. The reason I use this one is because it does pick up a lot of room noise. It does have really good quality, but you know, even 12 to 18 inches from your mouth, it's gonna pick up a lot of sounds, especially echo, which is something that a dynamic microphone like this Shure SM7B, which is really popular among streamers, doesn't pick up too much of that noise. Also, another mic like uh, a lavalier like I have here, um, this one from Deity, this is an omnidirectional, and while it does pick up more noise, kind of like the MK8050, it's on your chest, it's much closer, it's uh, not 18 inches above your head, and so it doesn't pick up as much echo. So for to get as much echo in the worst possible scenario possible, we're gonna use this microphone throughout all the tests. We're gonna normalize the audio to minus 23 LUFS, so just a little bit below, but I don't wanna do any compression to it. I want it to make, make it sound completely natural. So I'm not gonna improve the audio at all actually throughout this entire video, just so you can hear a clean sound of what the room sounds like without any kind of EQ, compression, or anything like that. This is our first audio test. This is with no acoustic treatments whatsoever in the middle of my room. And I am using the Sennheiser MK8050 about 18 inches from my mouth. So this is the worst possible scenario of recording in a room in your home that has wood floors and is 18 by 11 feet. Echo. All right, this is the second audio test and we've covered the walls with about 35% coverage, 35 to 40% coverage with sound panels. So we're getting less reverb off the wall. We still have the ceiling and the floor and the windows and other things exposed. But for now, this should be good.
So wow, that was already a huge difference. That was just the 12 and a half panels, the half being the two by two panel that I have above a light switch, um, which can't support the full two by four panel. But that was already a huge difference. And like I said before, if, if you're only gonna be streaming in one area, you might not need 12 panels. I need 12 panels because I'm gonna go film back there. I'm gonna go do voiceovers near my closet. I need the room to be fully acoustically dead <laughs> and not hear too much of that reverb. And especially with my huge monitors, I don't want sound bouncing all around the place and coming back to my ears and making it harder for me to make editing decisions, which is kind of the main goal when it comes to acoustically treating from monitors. So now for the second test, we're gonna add some of our corner bass traps. These I did buy on Amazon. They do come a little bit thicker. They don't come as compressed. These huge ones I have are about 25 bucks a piece and they don't comp compress at all. And they are a little bit large for my room, but I'm gonna go ahead and install them with these T-pins. I think they're used for sewing, but out of all the methods I've tried, I've tried uh, you know, the, uh, the, sp the spray, the adhesive spray. I've tried really thick double-sided tape from like 3M double-sided tape. And I've tried nails. These ones leave the least impact on the wall. They're just a little tiny pinhole in the wall. And since they have the T shape at the end, they don't fall off as easily. So this is what I would recommend if you're gonna be installing the acoustic foam from, Am from Amazon or these corner base traps. In this case, with these uh, corner base traps, we're just trying to get rid of some of those lower frequency rumbles. This is particularly gonna be an issue when you're mixing or when you're listening to something on your speakers. Uh, less of an issue when you're just speaking you know, spoken word. You know, It's not gonna remove too, too many issues with your actual voice in a room. It's more going to be the playback and the mixing ability when you're editing, and especially if you're editing music or music videos, this is really gonna help you out. All right, this is test number three. We've now added bass traps, large, medium, and small to some of the main corners, and high bass traps to every corner. Probably not going to notice too much of a difference with dialogue audio, but when it comes to listening to monitors or playing music, this should help with some of those low frequency bass energies. So like I said, we didn't hear too much of a difference there when it came to my voice uh, using the MK8050. Like I said, this is more of for mixing. I might do a future video on an um, actual mixing setup and where to put everything for that. But really, I'm just trying to do a combo one here because this is what I'm using it for. But let me know in the comments below if you want to hear any more tests when it comes to music playback with and without corner bass traps. Okay, so now for the third test, we're gonna add a more permanent setup, which is sound panels for the ceilings. Now these come in two flavors. There's the adhesive kind, which is what I'm using. Those just go straight up to the ceiling, and I'm using those because my ceilings are already low. They're only eight feet, like I mentioned before, and so I wanted to get them as close up as possible to leave me room for you know having lights higher up and backdrops and stuff like that. There are cloud versions that basically hang via little chain links, and there's other methods as well. And you can get those if you maybe have higher drop ceilings or something like that, and you can use those. Now, I would not recommend either of these solutions if you are renting. Uh, this is something you should do if you own a house or you own a, a studio space, because uh, it is a more permanent situation. Also, if you have carpets, uh, this you might not get too much of a benefit, but more on that later, as we'll t look through some of the other tests. This is really if you have hard floors, you definitely need to cover those ceilings or you need to get an area rug for your room. In my case, I love having the hard floors. I love the ability to wheel around C-stands in the future and move my chair around. And so I wanted to keep my floors absolutely clean. All right, this is test number four. This is with the ceiling panels, eight two by four ceiling panels added to the ceiling and along with the bass traps and the wall acoustic soundboards. And this is pretty much a dead sound. So like our first test, this is another test where we did hear a considerable improvement in terms of the echo and the reverb of the room uh, with the MK8050 super cardioid microphone. Now again, not super necessary if you already have carpeted floors or you're gonna use an area rug, but it does help that much more 
when you have hard floors and I definitely recommend it. It was a little bit of a hard install. I did the first couple by myself and then eventually I had my wife help me with the rest. I did eight two by fours. I basically took the square footage of my room, which is about 190 square feet. And I divided that by three and that left me with about 60 to 70 square footage worth of ceiling I needed to cover, which is about eight panels worth for the two by four. So that's what I did. All right, so now for our fourth test and our next step, we are going to add acoustic treatments to the windows. We're gonna use some window coverings. Now this can be the cheapest or most expensive upgrade you do, depending on how you go. I went the expensive route. You can just go to Amazon and you for $50, you can get some thick, almost blackout-like coverings for your windows and just put them over that, cover that. It's not gonna to block too much outside sound, but it'll block the reverb coming off the glass windows, which can be intense, especially in my case, where my desk is cornered up right to those two windows. So I definitely wanted to make sure I treated this as best as possible. I went with uh, the more expensive option, like I said. These are from Residential Acoustics. They do have a magnetic seal along the edge. And I might do another video on these, a kind of review of sorts on these. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. I went with the magnetic option. I don't know if Velcro might have just been easier or better, but if all you're getting to do is to black out your room, to keep the light from coming in, to keep sound from coming in, these are really great. We'll see though in the test if it helps with acoustics of the room as much as just keeping sound out of the room. All right, this is test number five. This is with both windows covered with the soundproof sheets. This is the last test. Let's do a clap. Echo, echo. All right, so as we heard from that test, not too much of a big difference from the acoustics within the room in terms of the echo and the reverb. Uh, most of the difference is keeping sound out. Definitely if a car drives by now, it's gonna be that much more quiet. Like I said, I might do another full review video on these just to kind of test them more in depth. But for my purposes, since I was doing all those tests in the middle of the room, didn't hear too much of a difference. I think right here near the window, if I'm talking towards the window, you might hear a little bit of a difference, but I'm not gonna test that unless I do a more in-depth review in the future. But let me know in the comments below if you're interested in that. And finally, for the fifth step and test, we're gonna just treat a couple more problem areas. I do have a closet with a mirrored door on it. So I'm going to cover that with a C-stand and a sound blanket. I got my blankets from Vocal Booth to Go. They're about $50 a piece and they are professional and they do dampen sound by, a, a, I think, 0.9 decibels or something like that. But you can get moving blankets much cheaper for, you know, $7 on Amazon. And I'm also going to lay some of those out on the floor. And I mentioned before that I wanted to keep my floors clean but in a situation where I maybe absolutely can't have any echo, let's say I'm doing a voiceover and it just needs to be completely dead, then I do have this option. I'm also gonna place my extra sound panel that I had in front of my door to cover that. But with those improvements, let's take a listen at the test and see how that improved the overall acoustics of the room. All right, this is a bonus test. I've now added two professional sound blankets to my floor just to cover pretty much all of the hard surfaces to see how dead this is. And let's clap again. So here again, for the third time now, we hear a very noticeable improvement by making these extra adjustments, specifically the blankets on the ground and then the blanket covering that mirrored door. It makes me think that, you know, even if you had carpets, especially if they're thin carpets or you only have an area rug, that doing those upper you know, panels on the ceiling might still be a benefit to you. Um, but again, check with your own situation, test all this out, do what I did, which is I ordered these you know, one order at a time. I did all the walls first, then I did the ceilings, then I did the windows, then I did the sound blankets. And that way you do it one step at a time and you can figure out exactly what you need before you break the bank. So there you have it. Hopefully that was enlightening. Um, I know that for some of you, especially if you're renting, then this setup is going to be really overkill. But again, I do recommend that you stay away and at least save up a little bit or save up some of your time and effort and tools to make your own. But definitely doing the foam core sound panels on the walls makes the biggest difference out of everything I tested today. Don't use those thin foam things that you get on Amazon. I've tried a lot of them and they're all just too thin. So if, if you ever get them and they come and kind of squish in a package, don't even 
the whole the, the name of the game is soaking up sound on the walls so that the sound doesn't bounce off your walls thousands of times especially if you're mixing on a monitor that sound is going to ricochet all over the room and if all you have are these little thin sound panels on the walls even if you have a bunch of them together they're not going to soak up that much sound and really in that case you have to pad the entire room which just looks ridiculous it's a fire hazard i mean there's a lot of reasons not to do that but before we go as a bonus test i'm just going to take the camera and go outside this room we can hear what that sounds like then come back in and hear what it sounds like all right here we are just out of my office slash home studio as you can hear the echo throughout the house is uh pretty big but as we step into the room we can hear that it's immediately much quieter, uh, much more tame in terms of the reverb and the echo. So I'm definitely happy with the improvement, even though it was definitely a bit overkill. So you could probably see why I call this room the asylum. I mean, it is absolutely dead sounding in here, which is exactly what I want. Uh, the funny thing is the moment you remove some of the echo or most of the echo and reverb, you notice some other things. You notice the sound from your computer. I have a water-cooled computer right here, which is normally very silent, but I could start to hear it a little bit more. Uh, I have a NAS, which is much louder. Typically didn't notice it, but now that everything else in here is quiet, now that I can't hear noise from the outside, it's a little freaky. And you can, you can hear yourself think, you can hear your heartbeat, but in terms of the production value and the quality of the sound, it definitely is an upgrade. So I hope that was helpful for you. I have some of the products that I mentioned linked below in the description, as well as the sites to the two acoustic websites I use, Audio mute.com for the sound panels and the ceiling panels as well as residential acoustics for the window coverings so give the video a thumbs up if it helped you out and uh, let me know in the comments below if you've ever done some acoustic treatments to your home office slash studio and i look forward to seeing those thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed yet you can do so by clicking the button on screen and for more information about acoustically treating your home studio visit my website at filmin5d.com thanks again for watching